So you want to buy a CNC mill? Hello everyone and welcome back to Atman Unlimited. Today we're going to start a series of videos on how to purchase a CNC mill. What are the things that you need to think about and consider when you're purchasing a machine like this? The number one thing that you need to consider is your budget. You need to define your budget ahead of time and stay in your budget. Not only that, you need to make sure that you budget for everything, not just the cost of the machine. So we need to account for things like not only buying the machine, but getting the machine to the location we're going to use it at, installing the machine, hooking up the machine, and then also any accessories that machine's going to need. Tool holders, work holding, coolant, and possibly repairs for that machine. If you buy a used vertical machining center, you may need to do some extensive repairs on it. It all depends on what kind of machine you're going to buy. After our budget, we need to specify our machine. We want to be able to buy the best machine that we can get within our budget. After we specify a machine, if we can't find a machine that fits in our budget, then maybe we need to recircle back and reevaluate either our budget or if the size of the machine we specified is a want or a need. So what do we have to consider when specifying our machine? The very first thing we have to consider is what kind of parts are we going to make? How big are the parts? How many of them do we need to make? And how fast do we need to make them? So let's go over to the machine and talk about some of the aspects for making the parts in the machine. When we're trying to specify a machine, the first thing that we need to look at is our travel. Primarily the X and Y is what most people are concerned about. Z is also a concern because we have to make sure that we can machine as tall as our parts are plus the length of our tooling and then any offsets that our work holding is going to cause. So with this vertical machining center we've got 16 inches in Y, 20 inches in X, and 20 inches in Z with 4 inches offset off the table in the Z. Most of the personal CNC machines have about 8 to 10 inches in Y they can have 20 to 24, some of them have 28 inches in X, so they've got a little bit more X, but not as much Y. And then the Z's range anywhere from 10 inches up to 15, 16, 17 inches. So you have to make sure that your part will be able to fit within that work envelope. So this part here is a part that I make here for myself. This would fit within the 8 inch Y envelope. Same thing with this part here. So those would be okay to make. Remember, you can also turn the part this way. So now we could make that even easier with an eight inch Y. If we look at this part, or the, the strap piece from this part we made, this part's gonna be a little bit too big to make easily on a machine that has eight to 10 inches of Y travel. That doesn't mean we can't make this part on that machine. What we can do is we can offset it like this and now use our eight inches of travel to make the first half of the part and then do a second operation we'll, we'll rotate the part and now we can machine the second half but what that's going to do is it's going to cause you to have a second operation you're going to have to unmount the part and then remount the part re-zero the part in so it's going to take you more time to make a part like this rather than a machine that's large enough to make it and you can just put it on the table and, and cut it in one operation what you have to decide is you have to decide is the cost of a larger machine worth being able to make larger parts easier. So those are the decisions and balances that you need to think about when you're specifying your machine. Let's talk about the Z-Travel specifically for a little bit. The Z-Travel needs to account for not only the height of the part, so we have on this part some machining operations that have to happen here, so this part's about six inches tall. But now if we want to hold that part in a vise, now that part's even higher off the table. Now remember your tool has a length associated with it, 
So you need to make sure that you're going to be able to lift the Z column up high enough to equal the height of your work holding, your part, and then the length of the tool coming down. So if you have a longer tool, you might not be able to clear your part and machine the top of the part like you'd want to. So those are the things to consider when you're looking at Z heights. Also, be careful of the Z height specification. Like I said, this machine, the Z height is 20 inches of travel, but the very nose of the spindle doesn't go all the way to the table. It stops about four inches short. So what this machine manufacturer did is they gave you an extra four inches because they realized your tools aren't going to be zero length and your vise isn't going to be sitting on the table. You're going to have a little bit of offsets built in there. So they gave you a little bit extra usable travel by offsetting it up a little bit for you. The next thing we, that we need to consider is what type of tooling are we going to need to make our part. Are we going to be doing a lot of flat work that's going to require some larger facing mills? So this is a three inch facing mill. Are our parts going to be a little bit deeper so we're going to need some longer end mills? Maybe a larger drill, some slitting saws, or are we going to mainly be using some smaller tooling? So this is a couple of small drills and taps, some small end mills, thread mill. So those types of tools will also depict what type of machine you're going to specify. This large 3 inch facing mill is going to require a lot of horsepower to operate. You won't be able to use a tool this large in a personal machining center. The vertical machining center we can use this tool quite a bit and we can really remove some material fast so that ties into how many parts do you need to make and how fast do you need to make them. The type of tooling that you're going to need to use will dictate the size of spindle motor that you need. How much horsepower of spindle do you need? The larger tools, they're going to need more horsepower to run. The drills, with larger drills, you don't necessarily need a lot of horsepower to run them, but you need a lot of torque. So taking into all these considerations, that will also drive your choice whether you go with a personal CNC machine or a larger vertical machining center. After you decide what tools you're going to need to make your part, now we have to decide how many tools am I going to need to make a part. Do I only need one tool to make a part? If I only need one tool, I probably don't need to have the extra expense of a tool changer. Just a standard CN mill with no tool changer will be okay if I only need one tool. Even if you need a couple of tools, two, three, four tools, you probably won't need a tool changer. Once you start getting more than four to five tools, or if you start needing to use different tools in rapid succession, like if you have a whole bunch of different size drill holes, followed by a bunch of taps, maybe swap out some end mills, now you want to start considering a tool changer. As soon as you consider that you need a tool changer, that's going to start driving your costs up a lot. That's the point where a vertical machining center starts to become competitive with the pricing of the newer personal CNC machines. You can see there's a lot of things that you need to consider when you decide what type of mill is proper for you. There's a lot of opinions on the bulletin boards and forums and YouTube. Some people say, oh, don't bother wasting your money on a personal CNC machine. Those are tinker toys, you know go with a big vertical machining center. I, I don't agree with that statement. I think you need to make a decision based on what your needs are. And there's nothing wrong with personal CNC machines. There's nothing wrong with vertical machining centers. It's which tool do you need to do the job correctly. That's going to wrap up part one of our buying a CNC machine series. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next episode when we talk about location and power.